before I launch and start trolling, we'll have a quick look at the tackle and the lures I'm going to be using. I've got a mix of lures here. I've got a couple of plugs. These are floating diving plugs that dive at different depths. This is a tackle house feed shallow, which I've got in a couple of different colours. That only dives to about a foot, 30 centimetres. Then I've got one, a plug that dives slightly deeper. This one dives to about between two and three foot feet. That's a Savage Prey 130. Then I've got some soft plastics, weedless soft plastics with me. Now the ground I'm going to be trolling over is, is mainly going to be very, very rough, weedy, rocky ground with the odd clear patch, sandy patch. So the weedless is really useful because unlike the plugs, the plugs float and therefore you don't have to worry about them sinking down. But of course the weedless lures uh, will sink. And therefore, if they do happen to sink down into the rough ground, I've got less chance of being snagged. Now, when I say sink down, what could happen if I'm playing a fish on the other rod um, and then, of course, uh, and stop paddling? And of course, these lures are going to sink down. And also, when I initially cast the lure out before I start trolling, trolling, by the time I get pick up the paddle and start actually trolling, they would have sunk to the bottom in fairly shallow water. So the weedless is less chance of me getting snagged. So in regards to soft plastics, got a couple of paddle tail soft plastics there. This is a Red Gill Evo stick and this is a, a minnow paddle tail made by the company Lunker Hunt, said to imitate an uh, anchovy. And then I've got a sluggo, a six inch sluggo. So a mix of lures, so the idea is that uh, I'll have a plug on one rod and then a soft plastic on the other just to mix it up a bit. As regards to the rod and the reels, couple of lure rods here one is 8 foot 15 to 50 gram and the other is slightly lighter and shorter that's 7 foot 10 to 40 gram for those of you beginning in kayaking around between 7 and 8 foot is the ideal length for for fishing rods you don't want to go longer than 8 foot because it's just too difficult to manage the reels are 4,000 size lure reels and they're both loaded with 15 pound braid and then to the end of the braid joined by a double uni knot I've got about three feet of 15 pound fluorocarbon and the reason for fluorocarbon which is said to be invisible in water is to create a little bit of invis invisibility between the the braid and the lure and also as a, as a little bit of a rubbing leader if I do happen to, these plugs do happen to go uh, over rocks or very very close to, to rocks on the plug-in rod the lure that I'm going to throw the plugs Tied to the end of the fluorocarbon, I've got a very small link, which makes me e makes it easy for me just to change plugs if I want to. But on the soft plastic rod, what I've done, I've got no link on there. What I've done, I've tied a loop to the end of the fluorocarbon, which again, and then just looped it over the eye of the hook, which again makes it easy for me to change the soft plastic. And just got a small, and I've threaded on before I put the soft plastic on, I've just threaded on a very, very light bullet lead, which just sits, sits close to the soft plastic there, and it's just stopped there so it doesn't fly up the line too much. But very, very light, and because it's so light when I'm trolling, it'll only work very shallow. Okay, so with all of these lures, they're going to be working shallow, um, probably no more than about three or four feet, and even though at times I might be trolling in 20-25 feet of water, that's not a problem because if there's any bass around they will come up to the surface, close to the surface and hit these lures. Right, so we'll get out and uh, start trolling and, and hopefully see if we can pick, pick up a bass. Okay, I'm ready to start the trolling. I'm going to get the first rod out um, with the plug on. And basically what I'm going to do is just going to hug this shoreline right the way along the shoreline here, staring very, very, very close to the rough ground. If I go too far out, I'm over clean ground, so I want to hug the rough ground right the way around to that point you can see there. And then off of that point, there's a bit of a reef. And that means that, uh, I, in other words, the rough ground goes a little bit further out and then I can move out a little bit further from the shoreline. But basically, it's going to be staying over or close to rough ground. Now when I troll, I like to get the lure well away from the kayak. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually cast this out as far as I can. And then pop it in the 
rod holder and then when I start paddling just let a bit of slack out and I'm going to try and get it at least 60 yards away from the from the kayak. The other thing I'm going to do is set the drag so there's a bit of give basically because I'm using braid there's no there's no giving braid and if I'm paddling forward and the recommended speed is about one knot just over one mile an hour so it's just a steady paddle just enough to get that lure working if you get a fish take and it comes up against the, the no stretch of the braid then a little bit of give will then sort of prevent actually I've had it whereas if it's too tight this it can actually just and it's only the fish is only lip hooked it can rip it out the fish's mouth so I'm gonna set the drag so if a decent fish takes there's enough resistance to set the hook but there's also a little bit little bit of give So just letting out a bit more line now and then when I feel it's far, far enough away from the kayak I'll just flip the bail arm over and that's it we're we're trolling and a little bit later it's a little bit difficult for me to do it where I am now and with the direction of the wind I'll, I'll pop a when it's more suitable I'll pop another rod out on the other side and try and troll Control the soft plastic as well. I've got both rods out now. I've got the plug on one side, and it's the tackle house feet shallow. That's diving to about a foot. And I've got the soft plastic with a paddle tail on on the other side. And again, that that will, with just a gentle troll, that will only work about a foot or two under the surface. But where I'm trolling at the moment is not very deep. It's only I'm probably only trolling in about 10, 13 foot of water over rocks and kelp. When I'm trolling, I like to have the the rods forward of me so I can easily see the look at the rod tips and know when I get a take rather than having the rods put in flush mounted rod holders behind me where I have to sort of look back or listen for a take. But I've got them set but they're far enough forward and high enough that they don't get in the way of the paddling but not too far forward that I can't reach and obviously take the rod when I get a take. So yes, I've got that Scotty rod holder there, you can see there, and it's on a, a height extender, and it makes it very, very easy for me to, to paddle and also actually paddle under the reel and under the rod. And, and it's exactly the same the other side, a slightly different rod, hold, rod holder. I've got to make a right angle turn now to, steep, to stay trolling over the ground that I want to troll but when you have to turn is to if you can turn in a steady turn rather than trying to turn the whole amount straight away the reason for that is if you try and turn so too severely and you've got two rods out or even one rod out the line is going to cross over the back of the kayak and if you've got gear st stuck up on the back of the kayak like other rods and things then it could entangle but if you like I've just done there if I do a steady just a steady turn rather than too severe I can still keep the both lines well away from the back of the kayak now if I get a situation where I've got to completely turn round 360 degrees and troll back the other way then what I find it's best to do is actually just stop Take the rods in, reel the rods in, do your turn and then re and recast them out and start your trolling again, rather than trying to, to turn too severely. I mean if you've got no if you've got no gear on the back in your in your tank well then then then, then it's not a problem. You can you can make quite a severe turn. But that's what I find is best, just a, a steady turn rather than a severe turn and then it's a 360 degree just just bring the rods in turn around and then put them back out again great sight there see all the the gulls the herring gulls on the rock there yeah lovely 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 to see the wildlife when you're just trolling along close to these rocks
one. I, I couldn't get it on camera because I can't have the camera on all the time because of the battery, but I had a hell of a severe take then from a fish. And it does feel by its banging. You can see it coming on the surface there. It does feel like a bass. Just because it was a severe take doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a big, big bass because you've got to remember you're paddling forward at about one mile an hour and that fish suddenly comes and grabs the the lure and that's quite a severe and that's why I have the drag set a little bit a little bit loose but this one is on the plug it's on the tackle house feet shallow and so therefore it's just working a little bit below the surface only about a foot below the surface and I was trolling in about I suppose about 10 12 feet of water there it comes get it in not a bad bass whoops oh not a not a not a big bass but not a bad bass and, and I'll get this unhooked and you notice there I've got this uh, I've made videos about this before I've got single hooks on the plugs there and just goes to show there's no problem in hooking is hooked in actually hooked with two of the single hooks but far less damage to the fish if this needs to go back than uh, using trebles so that's fantastic so I've been trolling about, took about an hour and a half trolling, just hugging the shoreline, and we've got our first bass. And that's about three quarters of an hour before low water. So I'll get this unhooked and we'll have a proper look at it. Well, a nice bass there. This one measures 45 and a half centimetres. Um, we've got new rules that come out, came out this month in Cornwall, it's September. And the size limit has been raised from 37 and a half centimetres to 42 centimeters and that, that that's that's great so this one's well over the size limit so pleasing to get our first bass and that was say that was on the plug and carry on and see if i can pick up one or two more as i said that first bass was caught on the tackle house feed shallow 128 and this plug only works about well, no, actually no more than a foot, 30 centimetres below the surface. But what will happen, even if you're trolling in, say, 20 feet, even though it's just working under the surface, that's going along the surface with its rolling action. And of course, from underneath, the bass will see that. If you can imagine, you're sitting down on the below looking up and you see that silhouette of the lure working on the surface. And of course, they'll come up from underneath and and hit it no problem. So you don't always, although sometimes the bass won't come up, but you don't always have to work lures deep. Um, but yeah, so at the moment it's it's one nil to the to the plug. Oh, I've got the two rods out again. Got the once again got the plug on one side and the and the soft plastic on the other just to mix it up. But I'm just very very gently paddling here it doesn't take much of a paddle to to get those lures to work and that that's all i want i, I just want the enough speed to get that plug and the soft plastic to to work it's not a case of of paddling really really fast it's more a case of just a very very steady steady paddle which, which actually actually when you're going with the tide it's not always easy easy to do and you can if you're not careful end up just trolling too quickly i carried on trolling along the shoreline into the flooding tide but only managed a very small bass but when bass fishing it is always pleasing to catch at least one reasonable sized fish trolling can be an effective way of catching bass and is one method commercial line fishermen use with their long poles one each side of the boat, trolling lures, and maybe another line out from the stern. It is a method I often use from the kayak, and although hard work, 
is good exercise and relaxing padding along the shoreline at a gentle pace just enough to get that lure working and at the same time admiring the wonderful scenery and wildlife. When that rod tip bends over severely it is very exciting in anticipation of a nice bass. Once again I hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching.